the lesson will be 673. 673. From the series, All Things New, I bring a lesson this morning that we should be encouraged to sing the new song. In Exodus 14 and 15, we read about the Israelites. They're in a predicament. Through the power of God, they were released from the bondage there in Egypt. And even though Pharaoh let them go, and he saw the Israelites, a long line leave toward the promised land, it probably came to his mind, why did I let these slaves go? So he and the Egyptian army took after him. The Israelites had come to the Red Sea. Ahead of them was water. Behind them, they could see the dust of the chariots. They were trapped. Can you hear the Israelites saying to Moses, why have you brought us out here, us out here in the wilderness to die? And you know, of all things, they remembered about their time in Egypt. Oh, we had onions and garlic and leeks. And while I enjoy most of that in cooking, there's a lot of different foods to choose. Something sweet that I would probably long for. But God was with them. And even though here comes Pharaoh and the Egyptian armies, they're pursuing. And they're, they're going after them. And it's not necessarily in the sense that they're, they're coming uh, to follow them or, or next. They are going after them to capture them, to take them back. To put them back into slavery. I could just see the heart of the Israelites just failing. Oh no. Boy, that freedom was short lived. They knew what it was like to be in bondage. Many of their relatives had died in Egypt. The mistreatment, the, the cruelty that was placed upon them by their oppressors. It's not something that they wanted to return to. And so they've lost heart in a way. But God came to their rescue in that He sent a pillar of smoke by day and a pillar of light by night. And it stood between the Egyptian camp and the Israelite camp. God's delay gave the Israelites, time to begin their escape. And he told Moses, reach out your hand before the water. And God caused an east wind to blow. And there was a divide of that water. And the Israelites went down into the midst of that sea. See them going down? It's got to be a bowl type shape. Or it wouldn't hold water. So they've gone down. And on each side, there's walls of water. Could they see the fish? Could they see the coral? Could they? And they walked on dry land. You see, if it had been muddy, they could have got their carts and their animals and even themselves to walk fast enough to escape the army. God's in their favor, working to provide this escape. And so as the Israelites come up out of the water, I imagine their hearts again fail them by saying, Look, the Egyptians, they're following. They're going down into the sea. They're 
traveling through the walls of water. Oh, they're going to catch up. They're going to conquer us. And yet, God told Moses again, stretch your hand above toward the water. God caused the water to replace itself and it returned to the natural level of the lake or the sea. And it says it covered the chariots and the horses and the soldiers. And not one survived. And they're in Exodus 15. They see dead Egyptians on the beach. It says the people rejoice. And we see David leading a song. A song of victory. A song of rejoicing. Look what God has done for us. He has saved us. He's brought us up. And now we're on our way as a people of God. Chosen. And out of our tribes, God will lead us. We'll be His special people. And yet as they come into the wilderness, as they prepare to go over from Sinai into the promised land, remember they sent out the spies? And the spies brought back ten to two. We can't take the land. But I want to emphasize that singing of Moses, of the victory that God has granted the Israelites. They're saved. And they sing a song. What is this about singing? There is several songs that stand out in my mind. The other day I was listening to a memorial and one of the songs within it had a stanza that went this way. I want to sing like never before. Have you ever had that occasion, that situation that just overwhelmed you and, and while you sung in your life maybe something stood out that you sang a little louder, a little more meaningful, a little more joyful. This morning I want us to think about this new song that we're talking about from Revelation and from Psalms. There's another song that we sing, How Great Thou Art. And one of the stanzas says, well at the beginning of the chorus, then sings my soul. Doesn't that just rise up something, bring something up in your mind, in your heart, what God has done for you? Does it make you want to cry? To be so thrilled. In fact, there's another song in our books, 533. And it's titled The New Song. You look at it, turn to your book, song book, and the very first stanza, the words, it thrills my soul. What thrills you these days? There's so many things that are negative, so many things that seem to take everybody down. But I hope spiritually, knowing that God is great, God has sent His Son, He's given us the victory, 1 Corinthians 15, 59, we don't have to be whole hung. We, we can wake up every morning singing that song and, and repeating these words. I want to sing a new song. But what is this new song? Psalms 98 verse 1. Here again it encourages us to sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things. And while we gave an example of Moses and the Israelites coming out of bondage and crossing the Red Sea and being delivered from those mean, evil Egyptians, you know, as I thought about that, were they glad that those Israelites were dead? Are they glad that God destroyed them? 
How else could God give them victory than to take the opponent out of the way? To send an open door. To release them from the old to the new. That's what God does us when we become Christians. Oh yes, we should praise the Lord. Especially in times of difficulty. God remembers His mercy and His faithfulness. Psalms 98 verse 3. And although this psalm is about freeing the Israelites from slavery, it's also a prophecy of our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And there's none other that can bring this salvation. And no wonder we owe Him such a debt. A debt that we cannot repay. In our humble way, in our offering of self, as a servant, as we sacrifice to be stronger in the kingdom. It's all about His freeing us from the bondage of sin. And no wonder Paul wrote in Romans 8, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And as we remember what God has done for us, Do you recognize Jesus and what He did while He was on this earth? Read the end of the Gospel of John. It says all the things that He did couldn't be written down. It, the world couldn't contain it. But we have enough. We have exactly what we need to read and to know and take advantage of that opportunity of loving Jesus in return. And as we remember what God has done, we can trust Him to help us with today's difficulties and with tomorrow's uncertainties. Some of us have more years behind us than we have ahead of us. We understand that. That's the way of life. David writes in Psalms 90 about the shortness of our life. James tells us our life is but a vapor. We're here and we're gone. But while we are here, in the meantime, can we not rejoice in our salvation? The ending verses of this Psalm 98 has the creation in mind. And it's presenting this praise for the Lord for creating everything in this world. So let us also join God's creation in singing this new song of redemption and a praise to our loving Savior. Savior. Out of one of our songs we sing, Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child, and forever I am. As we look at Revelation chapter 5, we see a magnificent, magnificent scene of prayers and praise by noticing the one that could open the book. They searched. Who can open this book? We need this revelation. And there was only one worthy. Jesus Christ. Chapter 5, verse 5. And that book symbolizes God's eternal purpose for man's salvation. See, there is a scheme of redemption that we recognize from the very beginning. And as we notice the, the purpose of the Bible, two things we, we acknowledged in class this morning. It is for the purpose of our learning God and giving Him the praise and the glory. And secondly, the Bible is for man's redemption, our salvation. The new song in Revelation 5 verse 9 is a song of redemption. The expression new song is one which comes from the expression of gratitude in the heart of man who once was lost, but now like the lost lamb was found and brought to safety. That, indeed, is our salvation in Christ Jesus. 
And we see this expression being used countless times. Psalms 33, Psalms 40, verse 3, I, as I read. Psalms 98. And here in Revelation 5, verse 5. But also we find in Isaiah that because of the many wonderful works of God, the prophet wanted to sing unto Jehovah a new song and praise Him from the end of the world. Isaiah 42, verse 10. So we, as we think about the example of Moses and the Israelites, what did they have to sing about? God's providence. He's taking care of them. The, the slowing down of the, the Egyptian army. The, the, the crossing of the sea. And he causes their end. There's no more threat. Why was Moses singing? Because of he, he saw the the victory that God gave them. And he sang of the strength and the, the song came forth. You know, when it's in you, you can't help but sing. I've heard song leaders remorsefully say, as they lead singing, they actually see people in the pew silent. Their mouth is not moving. No voice, no sound, no melody. You know, I know a lady that, that had such a condition, she couldn't sing. She had surgery in, in her mouth, and literally she could not carry a tune. But you know what? You could see during worship, her going, not through the motions necessarily, but in her mind with a song in her heart and her uh, mind, she was mouthing those words, even though there was no melody coming from. Here's a person who knew the importance of singing. Singing praise. And in that singing, teaching one another in song, a spiritual song. It concerns me if a person is not singing. I ask, do they have anything to sing about? Or do they not care about what has done for them? Singing praise to God because He is worthy. We should devote ourselves to the praise of God for everything, good or bad. We should sing to God because of what He's given us. Do you know what it means to be lost? And realizing that there was that your sin would would cause you to, to be separated from God forever, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. To recognize the hopelessness, and then through obedience of the gospel, you have newness. The old man's gone, the new person, new creature is alive. It's a man or a woman of gratitude what God has done through His grace. He's given the victory over the grave to every child. God makes us always triumphant in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14. We sing to God because of our strength in Him. Every word, every memorization of God's Word, putting it in your heart, gives you the opportunity to realize what you were and what you've become. We are without strength if Christ is not in us. He's not our rock. He's not our fortress. He's not our deliverer. Psalms 18 verse 1. There's no fear when we're strengthened in Jesus because we know we are more than conquerors. Because of the strength of Jesus, Philippians 4.13. Oh, let us sing of the strength that He gives us. Let us sing of the relationship that is now ours. We are adopted. We are sons and daughters through our obedience. And finally, this morning, we sing to God because of our salvation. Next is 14, verse 13. 
Moses used these words. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. What did the Israelites think when they heard from Moses? What? Don't you see the army? Don't you see the predicament we are in? But just like Joshua and Caleb, who understood God's power, just like David in fighting Goliath, the other Israelites, the other soldiers of Israel, didn't realize, my God is going to deliver you into my hands, you heathen. We have God who provides it. In Acts chapter 4, 12 says there's no other name whereby there is salvation. The power of God is unto salvation is through the power of the gospel, Romans 1, 16. Oh, look what He gives us. He gives us hope, forgiveness, remission of sins, a home in heaven. What does He take from us? The dread of the possibility of hell? The surety of hell for those who are outside of Christ? Of those people who live for, their, for themselves? Devise their own way of salvation. We studied in Romans chapter 10 this morning through ignorance and through devising their own salvation, they were separated from God. He takes from us our guilt. Have you ever had regret and such deep guilt that you couldn't find peace or sleep or rest? God takes it away from you when He forgives you. And He takes away what we might think of deserved punishment. How many people were punished? People who rejected the truth. Ask about the two there in Acts chapter 5 who lied to the Holy Spirit. You see, we can fool men, but we can't fool God. All that the Christians knew is these two offered a gift of, of money from the sale of land. But they implied that they gave it all and yet they kept some back. Where are we? Did you not know what God has done for us? Do you not care what God has done for us? Change that needs to take place is one of priority. What matters? Who comes first? The change that needs to take place is our giving up self. This new song is sung because of one being forgiven. Do you have that forgiveness that you can sing about each day? Remember, it thrills my soul. I have something to sing about. If you don't, would you do something about it? Would you understand the need to, to believe and, and repent, confess Jesus' name, and to be Lord into a grave of baptism under that water where sins will be left under, washed away forever? Think about that. And if you have sin on purpose after become a Christian, have you repented? Remember what Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 26 says, there remains more, no more sacrifice. Oh, let us rejoice. We can, in this new year, sing a new song. Come while we stand, while we sing.